Hi, 大家好，我是 Dr. Allen， 欢迎回到我的频道。前两个星期，我们请到 Dr. Steven 跟我们分享到说，近视跟眼睛的健康是什么关系？那现在我们请到 Dr. Sophie 跟我们分享到说，要如何帮小朋友做近视控制。今天是这个系列的第一支影片，我们会分享角膜塑形镜片，看它是如何控制近视，还有它有什么缺点跟优点是你必须知道的。那我们就直接开始今天的访谈内容喽。Yeah, I know. Oh Alan's going to be here forever. I know. I mean, I don't have anything planned for us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just baby duty、oh, at home. Let me think. Ah, 角膜塑形片，意思？角膜塑形片。哦。Let's try in Chinese. I feel like I might actually be. This is like the poor man's telephone. But then I think you have to. Right there. Where I am. But I think I think if we do it in Chinese, I think we have to make it a conversation. Okay. So,、um, Doctor Sophie, to get things started, can you just kind of talk to us about what is orthokeratology in the first place? Yeah. So, orthokeratology, also referred as to OrthoK, is a clinical technique that uses rigid gas permeable contact lenses worn at night to achieve both myopia reduction and myopia control. Ortho-K is one of the most popular and effective methods of myopia control today. Orthokeratology has the most research evidence for myopia control.、Uh, multiple studies consistently show that Ortho-K can slow down eyeball growth length by at least 50 percent. Got it. Okay, so you're saying that this is something that kids can use to slow down their progression, right? Yeah. So how is it different compared to traditional RGP lenses? Yeah, so、um, RGP lenses, just to kind of explain, it's a hard contact lenses, so which is different than soft contacts, and in particular, ortho K lenses. Besides being hard contacts, its curvature profile is a reverse geometry. Reverse geometry means the center zone of the lens has a flatter curvature compared to the intermediate adjacent zone.、Mm. So when these lenses are worn to be at nighttime. When kids sleep with them, the contacts actually gently reshape the front surface of the eyes, and by doing so, it allows the child to see clearly without glasses in the daytime. The reshaping effect does last throughout the whole day, but the kids have to sleep every night with it to repeat the process. Got it. The mechanism behind is still being researched, but the most popular theory out there right now is called the peripheral defocus theory.、Mm. So peripheral defocus theory means ortho K lenses induce a myopic defocus in the peripheral part of the retina. So when the light hits the retina on the side, it goes through the front of the retina rather than the back,、mm. and this then help decrease the negative feedback from the eyeball to the brain to tell it to not grow longer.、Uh, now. Not really prevent it 100%, but it slows it out at least 50%. And most studies do show that, which is pretty significant, right? Yeah, 50%, 50 is yeah, definitely a lot better than yeah. Than no control at <laughs> <Yeah> . all. <laughs> so obviously, you guys see a lot of kids here for myopia control, right? So when you see a kid and that is interested in orthokeratology for myopia control, um, what are some of the things that you guys do here to evaluate to see if the kid is Really, a good candidate for ortho K or not? We do、um, test to figure out what their prescription is, and if it's their first time being nearsighted, most of the time we actually like to dilate the eyes、mm. uh, with cyclopentolid, which is a stronger dilation eye drop to relax their eye muscle to check to make sure there's no、mm. pseudo myopia. And other things we do is we do take a topography, which measures the mapping of the cornea, and that that kind of help us decide if they're suitable for ortho K or not.、Mm. The third procedure we do is、uh, measure how long the eyeball is, which is called the axial length.、Mm -hmm. So with this. With the machine, we can measure how long the kid eyeball is, and that will give us a gauge at what health risks they can have if their eyeball does grow longer. It helps us figure out how well we are controlling their eyeball growth. Hmm. Because the only way to check and see if the treatment is working is to make sure that the eyes are not continue to become longer on ortho K, right? Yes, especially、yeah. ortho K, because while they're on ortho K, their daytime vision is going to be good. And they won't have much prescription, so it's really hard for us to tell if the prescription is actually changing.、Mm. So the best way is to measure the axial length to see if their eyeball is growing、mm. faster than it should be, 
versus uh, at the normal rate. So the last thing we do is we do take a picture of the retina uh, when kids come in for myopia consultation because we do want to check to make sure the eyeball is healthy and take a baseline photo of it. Mm -hmm. And if there's any changes um, over the years, we can go back to refer to that baseline photo. Mm. But that's more for the health part of yeah. the eyes, right? But we just want to make sure the eye is healthy. We yeah. also do do a slip exam at mm. the cornea just to make sure there's no eye disease going on that would prevent them from wearing contact mm. lenses. Got it. Generally speaking, based on your prescription and cornea curvature mapping, your doctor should be able to decide if you are a good candidate or not. Mm. Ortho-K is especially good for children who have an active lifestyle, so that way they can be glasses-free in the daytime while they do sports and other activities. When they sleep with the Ortho-K lenses, they really don't uh, fill the lenses because their eyelids are closed. Mm. So like for kids that are maybe active in sports like water polo or something like that where they cannot wear the goggles on the water, so this would be the good option for them, right? So we do have kids that do uh, water sports, such as water polo and swimming competition, swim team. Their myopia is not progressing, but they do want to be glasses-free, so mm. they do more for the vision and glasses-free part. Because in water polo, you actually can't even wear soft contact lenses yeah, while yeah. you're doing the um, games. Yeah, um, so that kind of leads me to my next question, right? So, so far we've been talking about how wonderful orthokeratology is, um, what it can do for kids. But are there any associated risk factors um, with these lenses? Are there any cons that parents should be concerned about? Yeah, so just like any contact lens where the biggest risk factor associated with ortho-K is eye infection. Mm. The risk of eye infection in children wearing ortho-K lens has been found to be similar to children wearing daily soft contacts. Mm. But using the right cleaning and lens care product is super important because it helps prevent eye infection and lower the risk. We do recommend seeing your eye doctor at least every three to six months for regular follow-up appointments. This will help the doctor check for the health of the cornea to make sure everything looks clear and make sure the lens are fitting properly because kids' cornea shape does sometimes change over time and we have to adjust the contacts if it does change. Mm. Um, having a really good fit is important to keep the cornea healthy and eye infection risk lower. Mm. And it is also recommended to change your contact lenses, ortho-K contact lenses, at least once a year. Mm. Because what happens to the contact is over time, scratches can happen and germs can actually trap in between the scratches and that can lead to eye infection risk high, being higher. Which is a challenge because a lot of times I see kids and then parents want to save money by asking to see if they can reuse the same lenses over and over again. So that's not really recommended. Another con that can happen with any contact lens wear, just like Ortho-K, is it can cause dry eyes. Dry eyes yeah. It's not as common as in kids because kids naturally um, have a lot of water content in their eyes. But sometimes it can happen, especially with kids with allergies and if they're on antihistamine in the daytime, which can also lead to dry eyes uh, and wearing contacts at night can make the eyes even drier too. Mm. And part of the eye drop protocol that we have at the office is they do have to use artificial tears at morning and night to prevent dry eyes from happening. Mm. Another um, side effect of Ortho-K is it can also cause halo and glare especially at night or under bright light conditions if they're looking at a light source. And this is actually expected because of the way Ortho-K corrects a kid's vision, it causes different zone of correction. So I do tell parents that it is um, actually a good side effect because that, no, mm. that tells us that we're controlling their myopia really well if they see that. Most younger kids don't notice a halo and glare. It's usually the older kids that notice it. And especially kids who turn 16, they might start driving. Uh, it's something we do have to discuss with the kid to make sure it's tolerable for them at night when they drive that the halo and glare is not, um, is not bothersome to them. Mm. Because Ortho-K lenses are made out, made out of hard contact lens material, mm. um, if the kid does not put in the contact correctly or take out the contact lens correctly, they can accidentally scratch their eye. Mm. We do see that happen, but because the eyes are actually really sensitive, it has lots of nerve tissue in the eye. If a kid does scratch the eye, they will know. And we do ask them to call us right away if that happens and discontinue contact lens wear. Thank you for watching today's 
它的优点跟缺点，还有它的浓度要如何做选择。假如说你想要知道的话，你现在可以点节目去看我们下期影片。那我想要谢谢你愿意花时间看我做的内容哦。喜欢我的分享，别忘了考虑订阅频道，还有打开小铃铛。那我们下期影片再见喽，拜拜。